something for my godson Elijah and a little girl named Corinne. Some say the black of the better, the sweet of the juice. I save the dark of the flesh and the deep of the roots. I give a holler to my sister's own welfare. Tupac is, if don't nobody else care. And I... Uh, I like a long hair, thick red pound. Up and up if they fillet me down. Colorism is defined as a subconscious prejudice and discrimination based on one's skin tone. It is a pain that has been prevalent in the black community for generations. In present day, colorism is perpetrated all around us in the media and in our communities. Rappers often omit dark skin women from their music videos and rap about their preferences of red bones with long hair. The hip hop industry is a huge integral part of the reflection of values within society. We've internalized what we see on TV as the standard of beauty. Being a dark skinned individual and singing on a daily basis, I decided to take a look at colorism and internalized racism within my own community. More specifically, the campus of the University of Maryland College Park and surrounding area. If we can't value ourselves, then who will? This is why I decided to do this documentary, to examine it and to show that it's still prevalent today. Who taught you, please? Who taught you to hate the texture of your hair? Who taught you to hate the color of your skin to such extent that you bleach to get like the white man? Who taught you to hate the shape of your nose and the shape of your lips? Who taught you to hate yourself from the top of your head to the soles of your feet? Who taught you to hate your own kind? Who taught you to hate the race that you belong to? So much so that you don't want to be around each other. No, before you come asking Mr. Muhammad, does he teach hate, you should ask who yourself, who taught you to hate being what God gave you. So who did teach you to hate yourself? Where did this hatred within the black community stem from? If you were to ask people of the origin of colorism, many would not know. But the stem of colorism is rooted in slavery. Back then, lighter skin wasn't a mark of beauty. Lighter skin meant survival. It meant access to clothes, food, a better chance at education, and possibly being set free. Forget being beautiful, we weren't even seen as humans. This notion of wanting to look as European as possible has been internalized into black since then. And we've been brainwashed into believing that black is ugly. You know, from childhood, uh, you know, even growing up, you have um, kids that make fun of darker colored kids or um, kids that come from Africa, they're made fun of them. Um, and I think part of that problem is that we're not taught our correct history in um, middle school or high school coming up. So we're talking, we're, we're taught the European history, but if we knew more um, and were educated more on our own history, I don't think there would be so much of a you know, the disconnect between um, Africans and Americans. Um, personally, I don't have a preference, um, but unfortunately, as an African, um, it's a really big issue where I come from. Uh, I know when I was growing up, my mom, she would be very, very, like, uh, controlling when it would come to, like, the summertime. I used to play basketball all the time, and she wouldn't want me outside because she didn't want me to get darker. Um, when I was little, um, I grew up in D.C., and from a very young age, I had always gotten the message that to be lighter was more attractive. And in terms of boys, I never really would discriminate in terms of what color, like I would never say, oh, you're dark skin, I don't want to be with you, but when I was little, I specifically had a preference for lighter skin boys. I didn't think darker skin boys were ugly, but I just had been filled up with the head that the lighter you are, the more attractive the male is. At my elementary school, the lighter boys um, were the most popular, and they were the most desired.
Right. I know some people are like, oh, since light skinned people, they're superior, so I'm gonna like them, or you know, stuff like that. But I don't think that based on your shade, you're superior, because I know, you know, people are like, oh, light skinned people are better, because I know yesterday we talked about, um, and so uh, we talked about, like, oh, light skinned girls, like, I'm not gonna text them because they won't text them back because they think they're too good, or like, I'm not gonna talk to a dark skinned girl because, like, she'll keep texting me, blah, 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 all this stuff. And I think that, like, that's really that's like something that's really really stupid and I think that it shows how ignorant people are because you know you can't really base just one instance that you had like an experience that you had with someone off of like their color and I think that's what a lot of people get mixed up like with racism colorism I think a lot of people have bad personal experiences and they try to blame it on people's race or their colors and a lot of times they don't see that's just someone else's personality so I think that plays with colorism and also stereotyping and you know the way media is today because there are most I feel like most um, celebrities that are you know that are women that are actresses singers they're light skin and you know when people turn on the TV that's what they see so they're like oh I need to be like them and I think society today we place a lot of um, you know our influences and what we like and what we do on what we see in media and media doesn't help when everyone you see on TV is light skin. And you have songs by rappers that are like, oh, I want a red bone, I want, you know, yellow bone like that. And I don't think that helps at all with, you know, light skin versus light skin versus dark skin, however people want to call it. And I think that's that's just like really in their own people. And I think people just need to get over that and, you know, accept everyone for they are. I think that we all experience colorism every day with every song we hear on the radio that talks about yellow bone, red bone, light skin, dark skin girls. That division in itself is something that we need to stop perpetuating because it's just separating our race um, in a way that we do not need to. It's apparent like people identify it and people understand it and then they reinforce it. And it's like socialized. People adopt it. I mean, you got people like three. Then, you know, I don't understand that, Drake. I, I, I really I don't swear I don't. I swear I don't. But uh, people swear that, that all life skin people are, are like Drake. It's like emotional. I, I really don't understand And that then they think like uh, dark skin people like religion over you. That don't make no sense. It really don't make no sense. Except you got people like Chief Keith that's going wild. You know what I'm saying? Then they associate Chief Keith with dark skin dudes, maybe. Now you're associating the Drake album with light skin music. It don't make no sense to me, but um, I don't know, it kind of just gets. When you're considered someone that's darker, they're usually like considered not that pretty. Um, they're disrespected a lot more, and a lot of guys prefer um, light skin girls over dark skin girls. And um, that's always been an issue where I came from, but as for me, like, it doesn't matter. I'm okay. Yeah, I'm actually a Pakistan, so like colorism is definitely an issue there because, you know, in our culture, we definitely um, value light skinned people more, and then, or not we, but they, because I don't do that, um, and they actually like dehumanize people who are darker than them, or just dark skin in general, and I just find that really terrible, you know, like. Everybody is so beautiful to me that I want to, like, I appreciate diversity so much because it has become such an issue because everyone to me is beautiful. So I don't really have a preference, but diversity is the best thing. I recently was called by a friend of mine who told me that her brother, um, we grew up together, her younger brother, he does not date black women um, unless they are very mixed looking, almost very, almost passing for white. And he's dark skinned, his sister is dark skinned, his mother was dark skinned, and he said he hates black women, hates dark skinned women, he thinks they're all ugly. And I grew up with him as, as a child and it really hurt me and it hurt her, she called me crying, to, to face discrimination herself as a darker skinned woman and have her brother, her own flesh and blood, say that about himself, his mother, and yeah, it really hurt. Um, I had an uncle who I was very close to, and he actually married someone, he actually married a, a French woman, a white French woman, and um, that's when I sort of, as a child, that whole like idea of like, that schism between the two was sort of broken, you know, and that's where I, I guess like, parents sat down with me and they're like, yeah, they're, 
there are really no differences between different people. They're just constructs that are being created to divide people. And from then on, I would say that I had a more mature um, view of different people. And today I can say that thankfully I don't have a preference, depending on what shade you are. You even find people wanting to run away from their race. They want to marry a white girl or a white man so their kids don't look like them. Definitely still think it's a problem. It's definitely problematic in today's society because it, def like she said, it definitely affects your self-esteem, and it's. Colorism is definitely seen in commercials as well and in social media because I noticed that um, commercials back home, they actually advertise skin bleaching creams and that's just so like effed up. Like, he wants his browning, which is like the lighter girl, so like he, he, it's like, you know how like they tell people subliminally to bleach their skin, yes. yeah, so then they do it, like it, it's crazy, it's crazy what's going on. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I'll be honest, I've never been happy being dark skinned. I've always wanted to be light skinned. Um, growing up, I mean, my whole family's light, my mum's light, well, apart from my dad, but I don't live with him. Um, my sister's quite light, so I was always the dark one, so I hated it. I was like, oh, I'm always dark. And I went to school, and a lot of the people at school were light, so I just didn't like being dark. I hated it. Um, and then I started bleaching. Uh, 16 years old, I think about 15, 16 I started bleaching and um, everyone was happy with it, everyone was fine, like oh you look beautiful, you look nice and then I did some research into bleaching creams and I found that it was cancer causing so I stopped and I thought it's either 10 years down the line I'm suffering from cancer because I don't like my skin or deal with it now and not have to deal with cancer or just not even just with cancer but just learn to be happy within yourself and with what you've got now um being dark skinned i've never ever thought i was beautiful i always thought i was ugly the ugly duckling in school i was called ugly um i mean my nickname was literally ugly literally so um i grew up with that and it being normal Dating-wise, yeah, I have a preference, um, and uh, but that, that's just who I am. It's not like because who they are. I, could, uh, I just haven't like really dealt with like I would say uh, girls in my um, skin tone, but I don't I don't oppose to it. If that makes sense, I choose not to. It's just like a lot of people who I've been with are not as dark as as me. So do you think colorism is a problem in today's society? Well, yeah, 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 basically. Um, our whole nation is, is built off of, of race, actually. You can see in, like, magazines, you can see in magazines, uh, like, they try to put lighter skin tones and stuff like that. My mom doesn't like those kind of things because she's like, she's almost as dark as me, and she she loves dark, beautiful dark people. And signed with a pen and ink of self-assertive manhood, his own emancipation proclamation. Let anybody take your manhood. Be proud of our heritage. As somebody said earlier tonight, we don't have anything to be ashamed of. Somebody told a lie one day. They couched it in language. They made everything black, ugly, and evil. Look in your dictionary and see the synonyms of the word black. It's always something degrading and low and sinister. Look at the word white. It's always something pure, 
Han Kim. But I want to get the language right tonight. It wasn't that as soon as I saw someone light skin, I was just like, oh yeah, I like him. Like, it was just that I'd never seen someone of a darker complexion that I found attractive. Like, it just so happened that most of the guys that I found attractive were light skin. But I also feel as though like that had to do with like where I went to school the majority of my life because I was raised in predominantly white schools. And I feel as though like that had an influence and an impact on who I found attractive and like who I was exposed to. But yeah. So for some reason, like when I was in high school, it was just like if someone was lighter than me, I was like, I can't date you. Just like I think it was I don't know if it was like my own insecurities or something, but it was just kinda like if you were darker than I mean if you were lighter than me, I just wouldn't think of you as anything. Like I wouldn't wanna pursue you. Cause like if you're lighter than me and we're walking around, it's kinda like, oh, I'm with a light skinned guy. Like it was it wasn't like I don't know. I felt like I had to be lighter than the guy that I was dating. Um, you know, being dark skin, you know, you always get the dark skin. Comes to jokes, yeah. You know, funny games. In terms of my identity, how people perceive me, like I've like I've been called, you know, what I'm saying back in the day, you know, like, you know they used to be called like um, white boy. People used to call me Mike Baby because because I used to ball around the neighborhood. So, they used to call me Mike Bibby. Everyone who knows me, uh, like, knows my name and calls me my folks. So, they, like, reflecting upon me being, like, as light as I am. Like, people just call me, like, so, yeah, you're not black, you're white, you're not even, like, you know what I'm saying? We've we went through this before. Like, we've had these conversations. Like, we discussed past, like, Annie come up to us and be like, oh, I like you too bad. And you're right, like, um, I want to be like, okay, I went to a high school where it was pretty diverse, but either way, um, we still found people being, picking sides between light skin and dark skin. Um, you hear guys always talking about, you know, how they want a light skinned girl with long, pretty hair, and that's why girls, you know, find themselves trying to stay out the sun and make sure they have their weave up to down here and like, I mean, that was never me, you know. I always wore braids and always had the same skin tone, wasn't going to change. I remember one time a guy asked me to take a rock. He said, why are you so black? You look like the bottom of my shoe. You should take this white rock and maybe you'll get lighter. That hurt. <laughs> Thing is, I was only like maybe a shade darker than him. I know, little kids can be cruel. I decided to step out of the University of Maryland's campus and examine colorism within the community. Here, I met the mall of Prince George's, also known as PG Plaza. And to my surprise, no one wanted to be recorded. Hardly anyone was interested in anything I had to say. So it was very hard to get people's views on. I also went to a store where I knew they sold skin bleaching products, but they blatantly refused to be recorded. They didn't want to say anything regarding any of their products. They did not want me recording the products either. And then I ran into this gentleman who had no idea what colorism was, and he had never even heard of people discriminating against one another because of their skin tone. I, it's one of those things that, you know, I won't say that it does not exist, you know, because it, a lot of people had, uh, you know, mentioned that before. And I would think it might exist, but, you know, me personally, I, uh, 
you know, I think my mindset is uh, there's no focus on it, so I don't think that I have, I always say that I have really, really weakness. I mean, you know, any discrimination because of my calling. You have, you know, it's kind of like your mental life, how you was raised. So it depends on, like, you know, your, in your family who was portrayed as, like, pretty or beautiful, but everybody, I've stepped out of the, the box, you know, the light skin and all of that, or the dark skin, this, whatever you, it really doesn't matter. Saying that, uh, you know, when it comes to, uh, you know, discrimination, you know, I think we have to, uh, you know, rise above that, you know, rise above the fact that, uh, you know, people discriminate against us, you know, because we're black, you know, because I think it just, it's, it's just pure, you know, ignorance from the part, you know. I finally ran into this beauty supply store that actually did allow me to record them and the skin bleaching products that were there. And the products uh -huh. all by Palmer's. Oh, those three. So how often do people like buy them? Oh, sorry. Like on a weekly, on a monthly basis. No, because I saw when I sell here, they see those three products. They use. Oh, okay. The lady who worked there showed me the three most bought products, skin ablution products that were there. There are over 20 brands of skin bleaching creams, lotions, and soaps. Carolyn, you've been crying a lot. Tell me why. Yes. Is it Latasha? Latasha? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. You said that she bleached her son, or sons, sorry. And I have a son myself, and I'm a single mom. And I think the most important job for a parent is that um, you teach your children to have a, a self-esteem and give, build their self-worth. And I think bleaching your children and teach, teaching them that <clears throat> they're going to be better because they're lighter is like the wrong thing. I, it really got me. Oh my God. A woman that she, Latasha, she does not know you. You're a perfect stranger to her, but your story is bringing her to tears as a mother, as a as a fellow mother. Yeah, I'm I'm sorry about that, but I mean, um, I do it so that they can have a clear skin and it, you know, it presents well. Is one thing that's interesting to me with you, Latasha, is that what your mom did, and I, I respect all mothers, so I don't mm -hmm. say this in disrespect, but I do think that it was not a positive thing for you oh. as a young girl growing up, and her putting that on you is telling her, telling you that you're ugly, that you're not good enough, that's right. that well, you're less than. She always, she always told me that I was beautiful and pretty and everything, but a lighter complexion will bring it out more, and I just found it to be true. <laughs> What's the most painful thing that you've heard when it comes to your skin? <laughs> um, that I've heard, oh, it's so many. Um, I think it was mostly coming from like good friends of mine. You know, we were out, it, they were lighter than me. And do I have to say this time? Because this yeah. stuff hurts. Don't say their names, but just say, tell me the story. They were saying, they said pretty much like, oh, all y'all pretty, y'all be straight if y'all didn't have her with you. Oh. You know what I'm saying? So Wait, who said that? A guy said It was said some that? guys. Said that when you were with me? Pretty much friend. saying like, you know, because all I'm light skin and I was the only dark one. Mm. Fine. I was the only dark one. And what that feel like? And I feel like my skin is much darker than everybody else's. Like, you know, a couple of these girls up here, they got pretty fair skin. I wouldn't mind being their color. I feel like I'm tortured in a way because of the, the, my daily issues of what I'm going through and what I'm trying to get at in life. You know, I just be happy all the time, but nobody knows, nobody knows. Because especially for black people, we've already had issues with other races, so why are you trying to put people down within your own race? You, gotta, you have to sit together because we already had struggles. 
So when I was little, one time, um, you know the notes that they used to pass out, the boys would be like, oh, will you date me? And it would be like, check yes or check no. And this guy gave one to me and my best friend, and we didn't even get our own note. He gave us the same note, and if you opened up the note, there was her side, her name was Kim, and my side. Kim's side was like, oh, you're so pretty, you smell good, you're nice. And my side was like, oh, you're the prettiest dark-skinned girl. And I was like, wait, prettiest dark-skinned girl? Because I had never heard that type of distinction before. That was my first encounter of someone associating my skin color with my beauty. Before, I thought it was all just like, you know, different shades. Some people are white, some people are black, you know, it doesn't really matter. That was my first encounter of someone equating being lighter with being prettier. And after that, I started to think about, you know, I was more self-conscious about what my skin color meant, and it just shouldn't be that way. That was my first encounter with it. Uh, but for me, Dark skinned women is just as gorgeous, just as gorgeous, all of us, as light skinned girls. I mean, it's just the way. You just gotta find the right yeah, one. The way to put together the skin is those C lines. But for somehow, I always kind of have preferences for light skinned individuals. Um, but that never really hindered my decisions in dating a, a darker boyfriend or someone midnight or something like that. Um, I do have a preference for light skin. I am darker skinned, so I'll probably favor dark skinned people. I mean, I appreciate someone for their beauty, but I feel like because of like, I don't know, like fears and like the way I've been treated for the color of my skin, I'd probably always make a preference for dark skinned people. I think it is a huge problem because it's something that we don't need to do. We can't get mad at people for discriminating against us when we discriminate against each other. And I think to fix this, the first step is to attack the media because in the media, it's you see it every day. You see it in the rap songs, you see it in the music videos, commercials. If we attack it there, then it will set a great example for the population. I mean, like there's. <laughs> There's certain attributes that you associate with, with certain skin tones. You feel me? So if I see a white girl, I'm like, oh, she's not going to really have the uh, meh, uh, right? Yeah. And then if I see a, a light skin, um, a light skin black woman, I might, I might say, I might look at her hair, I might look at her eyes, you know what I'm saying? Typically, the light skin female guys. Okay. Like this the man, eyes. this man has some OC eyes. Uh, but, <laughs> I mean, he's a light skin dude, like, you don't really see that on dark skin people that much, like, 